Hi, everybody. Mm -hmm. Hi. Uh, thank you for coming. My name is Ham Gillett, and if you can't hear me, um, just raise your hand. I think I can uh, project in here. Um, I work for the I work for two different solid waste districts, but the solid waste district that Cavendish sits in is the Southern Windsor Wyndham Counties Solid Waste Management District. Fourteen towns, uh, going from Windsor down to Rockingham and over to Plymouth and Reading. I guess that's the uh, Ludlow, all those towns. Um, and I do, I do mainly a lot of, I do a lot of outreach. Before COVID, I was going into a lot of schools and doing a lot of. Um, do we need to have a mask on? Well. <coughs> Pardon? If you don't mind wearing one, we would prefer it. But I oh, that was but if you it, Yeah, there's some right there. Yeah. I do. I'm a little uh, closer for it. Yeah. I um I just seem to have been around a lot of people lately who are um just COVID is popping up all over and um so I, I thank you for those of you who can do that to do that. Uh, appreciate it. Um that's pretty much it. I do. I work in schools. I, I give presentations to businesses. I I'm mainly in in charge when the when the uh, Act One Forty Eight was first established in Vermont. It was um, sort of when I was starting to work for this organization, and I had to um, go around and make sure that all the restaurants and all the schools and and everybody else was. Uh, First of all, recycling what they had to recycle, and then uh, compost and sorting food scraps. So, but the basics, uh, Act 148 is the Vermont Universal Recycling Law, and the final stage, final piece of it that was put in place uh, started July 1st, 2020. And that was when everybody in the state, by statute, by law, uh, required to sort food scraps out of your trash, with the exception of meat scraps or fish and, uh, and, and bones. Those can continue to go in your trash. And the reason that, those, uh, that the law was passed really were, was threefold. One was that Vermont only has one landfill left in the state. It's up in Coventry, which is about 10 minutes from Canada. It's owned by Casella. It's enormous. But it's Vermont's only landfill. And when that's full, um, we don't know what we're going to do with our trash. So we are trying to keep as much of it out of it of the landfill as possible and to extend the life of that, of that landfill. Uh, food scraps is about 40% of the average American's household 30 gallon bag of trash. So when you think about taking all of that out of your trash, uh, you generate a lot less trash and you're putting a lot less in the, in the landfill. If it goes in the landfill, I've seen uh, a picture of a bunch of carrots that were in a landfill for like 10, 15 years. And you, they, they came, somebody excavated them and they still look like a bunch of carrots. They just mm -hmm. don't, it takes forever for things to break down uh, anaerobically without oxygen in a landfill. And that's as scientific as I'm going to get. Um, the second reason is um, methane gas produced by rotting food coming out of landfills. If you ever driven by a landfill, the one up in Lebanon is the one that I refer to. Uh, up past Home Depot, you'll see big PVC pipes coming out. Um, that is releasing all of the methane gas. And methane gas is a very large contributor to uh, global warming, climate change, and all the rest of it. And the third reason uh, is that, and this seems to be a movement that's happening uh, in dribs and drabs internationally, which is that everybody's getting, a lot of people are getting on the bandwagon about um, soil regeneration and putting, taking your food that you eat composting it, putting back into the soil, uh, regenerating that soil. I've been told that uh, they've done a study and there are 
in this country, there are 60, this is like three years ago, there were 60 uh, harvests left in the, in the United States before all of the topsoil is gone. And of course, we all know what happened in the Dust Bowl, and we can see it happening all over, you know, many places around the planet. So that's, those are the three big reasons. So now back to Cavendish. Um, well, I should ask, how many of you are composting at the moment? One, two, okay. And, what, and the rest of you are uh, put, putting it in your trash? I'm not, I'm not the police. So what, what do you do with it if, you, if you're not composting it? Well, we have quite a bit of land. Yep. So we toss yep. like our uh, food scraps. Yep. Um, <clears throat> okay. And then leave the leaves and, sure. you know, but we're not composting. You're not so. creating compost. Mm -mm. And that's fine. As long as you're in yeah, what I you? moved here recently and my freezer's getting full. <laughs> I don't know what to do with some of this stuff. So. With all of it, or just the with with a lot of things, vegetables. I've got a container of vegetables, a container of, of um, coffee grounds, a container of um, eggshells. Of... Oh goodness! Yeah. So, so you are you are. Uh, I'm and... waiting to do, see what to do with them. <laughs> okay. Uh, and do you where do you live in Cavendish? I just moved to Cavendish, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. We can we can help you out. Good. <laughs> Peter can tell you about that, but I believe you can take your food scraps to the transfer station. Absolutely. And uh, composting there. Oh, okay. Which is which is terrific. Oh, good. Yeah. Yep. And then I also have I have meat from a, a chicken. I mean, I have chicken fat. Yeah. I don't. I have a jar of chicken fat. I don't know what to do with it. So. Um, that uh, if, if that were me, I'd put it. Um, I'd put it in the trash. Um, okay, so other people may have other, uh, you know, options, but okay. you are allowed to put that in the trash. It okay. should not go with your when you, with your food scraps okay. that you're composting. Thank you. And what about you, ma'am? Um, we take it to the transfer station. You take it transfer station. Of course, okay. then you have to pay for it. No. No. Yeah, no. if you're putting it in the compost, in the compost. Oh, there's really? a separate place for composting. Right. And you just put you it. You don't in have your, to give them a ticket. No so ticket for that. Oh. Nope. I'll, some I'll some, tell my husband. Yeah, <laughs> some transfer stations. It That's depends. That's in Weathersfield or oh, Perkinsville. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure of their rules. Well, I don't know. They always take his ticket. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it yeah. depends. Uh, I know that the Hartford transfer station, which is nearest to me, I live in Windsor, and they they charge a lot of a lot of transfer stations do. Yeah. Um, we live so in New York. You live in New York, <laughs> and. Yeah. What are you doing in Cavendish? You... I saw it in the paper, and I, I missed the one last year that was somewhere by Rutland, and I said, I want to do this. <laughs> Great. So I didn't even know where Cavendish was. Well. And then they closed 103. <laughs> oh, so, now so we've been you're... over the mountain and through the woods. <laughs> here, here you are. Well, thank you. for Welcome for coming. About and, an hour and a half. So, and you are, you are backyard composting. Yes. And how's it going? It's going great? Yes. Excellent. And you, sir? Backyard, it's coming. Yeah, okay. So you might learn something tonight. Who sure. knows? Who Maybe knows? It's, I, I, I'm, I, I learn as I go along, and uh, it's, it's practice, practice, practice. Um, Peter has made up this amazing um, little outline, which I'm going to try and follow. So I've done the reasons why. So, uh, and you basically all know that there are three avenues to compost. You can do it in your backyard. You can take it to the local transfer station, or you can, um, uh, I should say with uh, some caveats. Uh, when the law was first passed, they were requiring all commercial haulers in the state to pick up food scraps. And a certain hauling company, which uh, is the largest in the area, um, basically went to Montpelier and said, we're not going to do that because it's not cost effective for us to drive up uh, Hill Hollow Road and pick up Mrs. Jones's um, little bucket of food scraps. And so the law sort of got tweaked. And if you live in uh, a, a suburban area like Chittenden or Rutland or Brattleboro, uh, you may have your food scraps picked up at your house but it's, uh, 
it's it's a rarity, but there are more and more little mom and pop companies starting up with their pickup trucks and driving around the back roads mm -hmm. and picking up food scraps for people who just you know don't want to do it for whatever reason. Uh, but um, those so those are basically the three options: pay somebody to come and get it, do it in your backyard for free, or take it to the transfer station free, depending on what town you live in. Um, Okay, determining your needs. Do you want to do that yeah. one? Yeah. Um, so before you decide on how you want to compost, whether it be backyard or commercially or uh, transfer station, a couple of questions. What are your needs? How much compost do you really produce? If you're only producing a very, very, very small amount, then you might not need a composter, if you're living in a, an apartment building, you're not going to need a home composter. So that's why we have things like the, the, the transfer station, where you can bring it and you can, you can actually put it in the compost. Um, what kind of waste do you produce? Most people produce you know, vegetables like you described in your freezer. Uh, those kind of things from the kitchen table, plus a lot of stuff from the yard. You know, I mean, I, I get an awful lot of yard scraps from mowing the grass and, and falling leaves that I rake up. Um, and of course, the other question is how much brown can you produce? And we'll talk about what goes into a compost, which is green and brown, in order to make compost. And if you produce plenty of brown, then it's really easy for you to do a home compost unit such as this one. Uh, whereas if you don't have much in the way of brown material to put in, then maybe going to the transfer station is a better bet. So when you've determined what your needs are, and if you know you want a home composter like this, then there's a number of things that you will need in order to do it. You know, besides the actual composter itself, which you'll dump stuff into, you should have some kind of a pitchfork or a shovel to turn it over on occasion. Uh, it doesn't have to be done weekly. It doesn't have to be done monthly. I do it maybe once a year, which means my compost takes a lot longer to create. Uh, people who do it on a regular weekly basis, they get compost a lot faster. Um, an aerator. Well, this is, this is what a pitchfork can help you with because when you're doing compost, you're going to need compost material, the greens and the browns, water, and air. You have to get air in there in order for the, the microbes to do their thing. You'll need a watering hose or a can, watering can because every time you put the compost in or you put stuff in to be composted, you want to add water too. Um, buckets and wheelbarrows, whatever you want to use to take compost out and put it where you're going to use it because it is very useful stuff. I, I, I've grown a lot of things in compost and they grow very, very fast. Um, clippers and mowers, uh, I create brown to put in the composter by uh, mowing the dead leaves. I have a rotary mower. At the end of the year, at the end of the growing season, all the leaves fall. They're all on the ground. They're all turned brown. I run my mower over them, rake them all up, and there's my brown that I'm going to use right through the winter and right through most of this, the summer as well. Uh, so the, the mower is a good thing to have. Uh, screener, well, you saw this great compost that uh, Ham did. He screened it. Uh, if you're into making really fine compost, depends on what you're going to do with it, you'll need a screen. I've never used a screen at all. And, and uh, I, you know, I make compost every year. So... Uh, just throwing that out there. I just, just to break it, I, I do this because 
uh, I just like to show it as sort of a, uh, uh, not a wow factor, but to, that, that all the stuff that you throw in your compost bin eventually will break down. And it, it, if you run it through a screener, it will be that fine, but it does the same thing with, without, which is what Peter's saying. And it's just, you know, this is, I like to, especially in schools, I love to show somebody a, a bucket of rotten food and then say, um, <laughs> hey kids, this is what it looks like when you're done. So anyway. And uh, another thing about the screener is um, at the end of the season, when I take it out of the composter and go to use it, put it on the garden, put it on the lawn, uh, last spring I replanted a tree and I used that and it did great over the summer. Uh, but one of the things I always end up doing is picking the corn cobs out because they take, I don't know, five times longer than everything else to break down just by their nature. Um, another thing that I always, that will never compost for me, you ever uh, eat avocados? You know that little round nut in the middle? <laughs> Try and get that sucker to compost. <laughs> I've never been able to. So uh, those are just, maybe if I used a hammer on it or something. Yeah, smash it first. Smash it first. Yeah, that's a good idea. The thing about, also, but, if, you, if, you, if you end up with, with corn cobs and whatever at the end of your compost, you know, when you think you have finished compost, I, a lot of people just dump it back in and yeah. start it over again. That's what I do. Yeah, so. Yeah, so it's just. That's what the screen is good for. Um, couple of, one other thing, which I'll mention now, and it's pushing my buttons when it comes to buying fruit in the, in the uh, <laughs> supermarket, and they have these little stickers on them. Mm -hmm. You know, every banana has that. It drives me nuts, because if you put that in your compost, it will never compost. <laughs> it's plastic. And you go to pull out the compost, and you get these stupid little stickers in there. Anyways, that's, <laughs> that's a pet peeve of mine. Me too. Uh, so I make sure I remove them all before I, before I uh, put it in the compost. It, if you work with kids or in a school, I was just in the Weathersfield Elementary School the other day talking to the third grade teacher who has been tasked by the principal to get to do some on-site composting. Right now, they have a hauler coming and taking it all away. Um, and... She didn't know, but she didn't. She didn't know about the PLU stickers. And um, if you go, if you Google PLU sticker mosaics, um, <laughs> it's incredible what in some schools or grown-ups or whatever do. In, in the, like in the cafeteria, you put a big sheet of paper up on the wall, and then you tell the kids before you throw your banana peel in there, peel the sticker off and stick it up here. And it doesn't have to become anything, but it it's just an amazing work of art in mm -hmm. its own. And it's a great way for kids to register that they need to do that mm -hmm. and then go home and tell their parents. Mm -hmm. Remind me to talk to you about having the school after this. Right. Okay. Right. Um, so, um, what do you compost? What to compost? Do you want to talk about the browns and greens? Right. Okay. The biggest, if you go away with nothing else... Uh, Tonight, well, I hope you go away with more than this, but uh, the, one of the key things to remember about composting is uh, if, if you want to get some sort of workable material out, is that every time you put a kitchen pail full of food scraps in your compost pile, you want to put three times that of dead brown material. So the food scraps are your nitrogen, uh, freshly cut grass is nitrogen, anything green is nitrogen, and the browns are carbon. And the microbes will <coughs> love it, as Peter said, if you give them what they need to break down uh, their material. So one food scrap pail to three uh, brown browns. And it doesn't matter... This, I mean, these are mowed over leaves from my lawn. This is um, dead. I had to put it out in the sun. This is dead grass mowing. If it's fresh, it's nitrogen, and considered like a food scrap. 
This is, I do have a lot of perennial garden uh, flowers. These are smushed up and broken daylily stalks, particularly because some perennials have, if you look at them, they're like a straw. They have a, ho they have a hollow thing. And Peter said, microbes need air. And so if you sprinkle these in with your food scraps in, you know, one of your three containers of, of brown, um, a lot of these have uh, air. I learned from somebody who never turns her compost pile, but she's an extraordinary composter. Uh, she puts all sorts of this stuff in, and these are pine needles. So wood chips, shavings, um, little twigs, whatever. And when you start, do you want me to talk about starting a pile or is that? Uh, um, yeah, well, no. What, what am I, am I off? I'm off track already. Oh God. Okay. Um, what is it? Uh, uh, yard waste, food scraps. Uh, horse manure, cow and horse manure is great. Not fresh, but um, somewhat seasoned. Horse manure, particularly, people like because it's a, um, well, I'm sure you all know what horse manure looks like, but it gets, it, get, it gets, once it degrades a little bit, it mixes up very well with the bedding that the horse is in. And so you can put that whole thing, uh, a bucket of that whole thing, even if it's, uh, better if it's not hay, because hay always has a lot of seeds in it. But sawdust, shavings, um, um, straw mixed up with horse manure is great. And cow manure, chicken manure, terrific. Uh, that's another way you can get rid of your food scraps. If you know somebody with chickens, a lot of people are raising chickens now. Um, they would be happy to have your food scraps. Um, the one thing you want to remember is that uh, pigs cannot eat anything that is meat or anything that has touched me. The, the state of Vermont is pretty darn strict about that. I had a, worked with an elementary school uh, that was, when they first passed the law and they said, we're, we're all, we're fine. We're, we have, uh, one of our kids' parents has pigs. And so we just send everything home with, with him. So they were feeding this pig meat and bad, don't do it. Um, and uh, let's see what else is there. Been brown leaves, grass, shredded newspaper, shredded office paper is fine. The inks that they use now in newspaper are mostly soy based. So you don't have to be concerned about, um, you know, getting toxins in your, in your food scrap, in your compost. Um, tea bags and coffee grounds, great. Wood ash from your fireplace, it's dead. It doesn't do any good at all. Sprinkle it around your lilac trees. Uh, they love it. Um, and tea bags. I don't drink a lot of tea, but when I do have a tea bag, I'm very compulsive, obsessive, and I take the staple out uh, and, and I put the tea bag and the tea contents in and I take the, the white label and I put that in my paper recycling and I put the little string in the compost. Um, most people are not that nuts, but um, tea and coffee grounds are, are great. Okay. And, and then what not to put in. Oh. Uh, of course, you know, inorganic matter like plastic, uh, any kind of metals, um, charcoal, generally, no, because it's, it's just dead matter. Mm -hmm. They won't do anything for your compost. They won't do anything for your lawn, by and large. Uh, we say don't put in any meat or fish because meat and fish and fats require very high temperatures to compost. 144 degrees. And your compost is never going to get there. Uh, commercial composters can handle it. So therefore, like... If Casella has a compost uh, facility and they were to uh, put it in there, it would degrade and become compost. But don't even think about it for the home composter. Uh, dairy products, same thing. Although when it comes to eggs, 
not a problem. Um, the only thing I should say about eggs is when you go to throw them in, crush up the uh, eggshells as fine as you can. I mean, just <coughs> one hand is enough to do it. Crush it up because uh, those, again, do not degrade at the same rate as the vegetables, and yet they do add a good, you know, good matter to the compost. Um, never put in dog or cat feces or <laughs> human feces, which I think is self-evident, but none of those things should go into a compost. Um, Ann mentioned you could put in shredded up newspaper, it's really good, or, or uh, any of the paper that comes from, um, you know, your photocopy machine paper and such like that. But if it's a magazine or one of these glossy inserts in the newspaper, don't put that in. Don't use that because the inks that they use in that, they're, they're plastic-based ink, and uh, they have a number of other ingredients in them that would not be good for compost. You would want to grow something in them. And uh, wood chips are good, but don't use any pressure-treated wood. Pressure-treated wood chips will have, um, I don't know, what do they make it out of, boric acid? Or something, something to... They used to have arsenic in them. Yeah, they, used to, they probably still do. So you don't want to put that stuff in your compost. Um, let's talk a little bit about different kinds of bins. This is the kind that I use. It's very easy to use. Um, it's a top loading. Come out with my bucket. Take the top off. Throw in the uh, the uh, food scraps. Dump in the brown to go with it. Um, during the winter, I'll use the bucket to get water. During the summer, I have a hose sitting right next to it, and I'll just put water in there but always put in water. And then when the uh, compost is done, take that out, just stick your shovel in there and you can pull the compost out. Do you actually use those little doors? Only at the end of the season when I want to empty it. That's amazing. Yeah. I've never used them. <laughs> well, you know, during the season, if I want to turn it, uh, I'll, I'll take the top off yeah. and just turn it from here, but uh, no, I use them. And this is good because it'll lock. I was so wondering about the bears. You're not going to get, well, bears don't care whether it's locked. They'll just destroy it. Uh, it's the raccoons that you don't want getting in there. Mm. Can I uh, interject something about sure. bears? Because yeah. it comes up all the time. I get calls and emails about it. You said that you're just kind of putting your food scraps out in the woods. Um, that's okay. It's not great to feed wildlife and get wildlife, sort of make them connect food to human beings. Um, I wouldn't encourage that um, unless you're going to, when you throw food scraps, uh, unless you're going to cover it up with leaves and brown stuff, because um, my friend Kat, who's my guru, composting guru, says, if you do it well, it doesn't smell. And that goes for one of these. One of the one of the reasons that you put three to one in is that when Kat says that when she looks in her compost composter, she never can, she never sees food. Hmm. Uh, so it's all you either, she makes a nest sort of, and she buries it in the nest, she keeps covering up her brown, and she pulls the nest apart the next time she dumps food in and she covers it up again. Mm. But uh, bears are, uh, are a really huge problem. And I claim that part of the reason there's such a problem is that, Ver that Vermonters are now required to compost uh, and they're putting their compost mm. out and they're not doing it properly. Um, a bear, this has no bottom on it, as you can see, um, which, which makes it easy. When I finish my compost, I just pick the whole thing up and move it over yeah, and start a new pile. Awesome. I'm thrilled that you get stuff mm -hmm. out of those doors. Um, but you, you, um, 
in order to keep bears away from a composter unit or a pile, uh, the things that really work number are well, if you've got your food contained, is uh, they hate the smell of ammonia. So I know people who will soak a rag in ammonia and drink it all of that or tie it on. Um, the other thing is, um, <clears throat> I'm thinking of going in and uh, buying stock in electric fencing and solar powered electric fencing because they say that if you string a, a solar power or you know plug it in or solar powered strand of one elect one strand of electric fence around your composter or composters, uh, you take some strips of aluminum foil and you put peanut butter or bacon fat on it, um, hang those off the wire. The bear, if the bear shows up, it's going to touch that with its nose or its tongue, and it's going to get zapped. And it will momentarily, boing, but it's not going to really harm the bear. And the bear, bears have great memory, and they, uh, they will not come back to your composter uh, after that happens. So... Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, the 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 other ways you can do this is, you know, you can make a pile. You don't need a composter. You can just add food scraps and brown to the pile. Uh, it will compost the same as if it's in a plastic container. Uh, and that's great if you've got a place to do it. But uh, most people don't want that near their house. And that does attract more uh, more critters, more mice, more uh, squirrels, more uh, uh, larger animals like raccoons and ultimately bears. They also attract cats and dogs while well gone. Uh, um, no, no uh, there are certain molds that grow on certain foods that are t very toxic to dogs. Dogs mm -hmm. can die from eating uh, a banana peel or bread with mold on it. So another reason to, reason. unless you have no dogs around, uh, you don't want to be hurting your dogs or your, or your neighbor's dogs. So, so there, there are other ways of doing this. I mean, you can take a, uh, a garbage can, you know, a regular plastic trash can. And just drill holes in it, multiple holes on all sides and in the bottom. And then just sit it, put your, uh, build your compost in it. You've got a lid that's really tight fitting, that's great. Uh, it's no less uh, secure than one of these. It's no more secure than one of these. You can build a concrete block bin. If you have a lot of concrete blocks laying around, they have holes in them because, you know, they're made for building walls. And you just lay them on the side so that the holes allow air to get in. Uh, and you can do it that way. Uh, you can just take a piece of hardware cloth, you know, just a uh, uh, wire mesh and build it just a circle with the wire mesh, you know, as high as you need it to be. And you can throw everything in there. Wire mesh lets a lot of air in. Uh, if you build it properly, same same principle with greens and browns, water, you know, it'll have the air, it'll make the compost. And you can take pallets, uh, old used pallets, and you can stack them on their sides, fasten them together. That will make a, a sort of an open open air bin that you can then build a compost in. Uh, it's a little less secure than any of the others, but uh, it's doable. So this, I think, you know, I've been using one of these for 20 years, and uh, I find it to be easy. It's relatively secure. I've been lucky. You know, never had a bear, but hopefully never will. Um, and it works. It really works well. So. And plus, if you live in a neighborhood and you have a yard, but you have you know neighbors, I have three of these, and uh, I have neighbors on both sides. Our, our you know I don't have a fence between the yards, but it's uh, it's not bad to look at, you know. And it's it doesn't if somebody's if your neighbor is not into staring at a home a bunch of pallets wired together, um, 
then that just is a little bit better, uh, you know, more sightly. Um, I will add to your note about um, when you, if you use palettes, and I know a number of people who do, um, it's good if you line it with, not necessary, but it, it helps hold the food scraps in and keep critters out. If you line it with uh, chicken wire, fencing, or again, hardware cloth, quarter inch hardware cloth, um, which is hard to, you wanna wear gloves. It's, the stuff is sharp, the edges are sharp, and it's hard to bend, but um, it's very good. And some people also don't want things burrowing up under their soil saver composter. So they, uh, I recommend going to a hardware store and buying, uh, having them cut a piece of hardware cloth, just set it down on the ground and then set that on top of it. it uh, it'll keep your yeah. critters from and, coming and in. In case you were wondering why someone would have three composters, <laughs> I only have two. <laughs> Uh, while one is cooking, you can be putting stuff into the next one and continue to cycle, you know, year after year. That's what I generally do. And it, yours takes about a year? You, well, yeah, because I don't rush it. Yeah. I could probably do it faster if yeah. I wanted to, but... Mine, mine, takes a, mine takes a good year. And while that, when I, you, we, you should always, when you, you know, at the end of the season or whatever, when you stop, you want to finish off your compost by just, you basically just have to stop putting stuff in it and put some brown stuff on top, put the lid on or whatever, and just let it do its thing. And, you know, you can turn it once in a while if you want. But um, I have three because somebody gave me one that was a woodchuck had attacked and um, <laughs> somebody else gave me another one that something else had happened to it. But I use one of mine to store my, sh my shredded leaves mm -hmm. in, and, but you do not need to. Do you stop adding water at that time as well? Yeah, pretty much when you're, when you're, you know, when you're ready to stop, just let the microbes do. And basically when it gets full. But uh, just a word about the season. Mm. Uh, during the summer, spring, summer, and fall, you're adding, 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 and it builds up. And then it gets cold and starts to freeze. Nothing's going to happen during the winter when it's frozen. It will freeze solid, and it will just sit. Another reason to have a second one, but, you know, it depends on how much you produce. Because you can keep <coughs> adding to it, even though it's frozen. And what you add to it will freeze. When you get to springtime, and everything starts to thaw, You'd be amazed at how much it will sink down. And I usually, I fill them right to the top come late November, early December, and then it freezes up. And when, when the full spring thaw uh, has come through, that thing will be down as much as a foot, or, you know, eight, ten inches down. It's amazing how much it will cook down. Uh, and what's happening, of course, is you're producing good compost in there. So essentially, you're saying that it takes six months, not a year, <coughs> because it's not doing anything in the winter. Is that correct? That's true. Or are you talking two no, seasons? No, you're talking, you're right. It, okay. It's about six months of cooking. So it's a full year before I'll turn it over. Generally in the spring, I will uh, empty one and use that compost around the yard. Uh, and then continue with it, and then and we build a new one. You want to talk about building uh, compost? A composter or building compost? Oh, building compost. Yeah. yeah. Um, before I do that, and before I forget, I wanted to. Um, when you were talking about PLU stickers, I wanted to talk about my bugaboo, which is compostable tableware, uh -huh. which I hate. And um, I was on a panel. In, uh, in June, the Vermont Composters Association um, had a panel of people talking about compostables and how, or compostable wear and how much it's being produced and manufactured and how little of it actually breaks down. It's a big greenwashing mess as far as I'm concerned. And um, they're even discovering that compostable wear has PFAS in it, if any of you have been following that whole thing, uh, the, the forever chemicals. Um, it just, 
the, the, uh, an example, the Chittenden Solid Waste District has their own, I think they're, they're associated with uh, a company called Green Mountain Compost. And uh, last January 1st, they stopped accepting any compostable ware in, in, in their food scraps because people get really confused. I mean, you can go to a, a, a restaurant or a takeout place and get a plant-based clear coffee, cold, you know, iced coffee. And you take it home and you don't look at the bottom, you don't really know, so you throw it in your recycling as PET number one clear plastic. Well, you've just contaminated your entire load of compost, of, of recyclables, because that plant-based clear cup is not plastic and it's not recyclable. Uh, the opposite can happen. If somebody takes a clear PET number one coffee glass and thinks that it's plant-based and they put it in their compost pile, they've just contaminated the compost because there's plastic in it. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're going to use compostable ware, make sure that it says BPI on it. And I can't even remember what that stands for, but it's a something something institute. Uh, that means it's certified as totally biodegradable compostable plant-based. I would just steer clear of it. When I go to a picnic or something, I bring my own, you know, I go to a thrift store and I buy a plate and I bring some silverware and a glass and I just pack it in and pack it out. And, uh, you know, I wish more people would do that, but I'm, uh, it gets me as fired up as you do about the PLU mm -hmm. yeah. stickers. So, um, and also if you look on, on packaging, that says, isn't it good when you're tired and you yawn and you have a mask and nobody can see you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I just said it, I do it myself. Um, um, the one thing, the other thing is when you read the fine print on package, if you buy a, a, um, a, con, a package of compostable soup bowls or something, if you read the fine print, it says only compostable in a commercial facility, mm. and the writing is tiny. Mm. But that means that it won't do anything in your backyard compost or in the woods when you're throwing stuff out. It will eventually co co uh, break down in a composting facility, those giant windrows where the temperature gets up to at least 140 degrees, uh, but it might have to go through twice even in one of those mm. facilities. All right, how to build a compost pile. I'm going to refer to Kat again, my friend Kat. Um, here's what she does. When, she, when this is empty, uh, you lay down either um, sunflower stalks or some thin uh, twigs, branches. You do them cro cro you make like a crosshatch thing at the bottom. This will allow air to come up through, which you need. Uh, then you lay down a, um, a layer of brown stuff, dead grass, dead leaves, flower stalks, pine needles. Make, make a nice big thick layer of it. Then you can start adding your food scraps. And as I say, every time you put the food scraps in, make sure that they're covered up. And you just keep doing that and doing that and doing that, layer, layer, layer. And turn it and water it. I'm bad about watering mine, but um, you sprinkle some water in. It's, it's, uh, it's, all this is experimental. And I gave one over here is a sheet that has like troubleshooting. It said, if your compost is doing this, here's what you need to do. So I encourage everybody to, to take one of those. So it's just, it's a big old experiment until you get it, uh, get it working. Corn stalks work like sunflower stalks? Yes. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so that's basically what you do. Start with a little, you know, aerating crosshatch on the bottom with bigger pieces, leaves, grass, dead grass, whatever, then your food scraps, then just keep doing that and turn it. 
Like you said, you turn yours like once a year or yeah. something. Yeah, I, some people turn theirs once a month. Do whatever you sort of feel like doing, or whatever your compost pile is is telling you. You know, um, I think I probably turn mine every maybe twice a summer or something, and I just feel like doing it. So. Um, no, that also brings to mind there's another type of composter you've seen probably. It's the tumbler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It kind of it's round and rotates. Um, and that's what it's meant to do is to turn. So every time you throw stuff in, you turn it, it all mixes. Problem with those, uh, I found, is most of them don't have good drainage. You know, here, you can throw all the water you want in. And there's no bottom to it. It's just going to go down into the ground and go away. Good point. Keeps everything wet, but just as wet as you need it. If you have too much water, it's going to turn into a sludge that will stink mm. to high heaven. And it will not turn into good compost. So just then you have to be very careful with those those compost. Yeah. Sometimes you get like uh yeah. Large stuff from cauliflower or uh, broccoli. Do you have to chop that up a little bit? It's better if you do. It's like you know, chopping up a watermelon rind or whatever. Right. The, the the more you chop it up, the faster oh, yeah. it will break down. Yeah, right. I, I would. Yeah, I would definitely do Even that. Even with corn cobs, I'll snap them three or four pieces before I throw them into the compost. Yeah. And they're still there next year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, um, did people have um, uh, questions? Yeah. More questions? Please, Thank please. you for reminding me. You mentioned uh, bread, uh, moldy bread. Do you put moldy bread in there? You, you can, and it will, it will break down, mm -hmm. but you just don't want a, you know, your dog near it. To get so it. after a party, there's cake with icing. Fine. You can put the icing, yep. which is dairy, maybe. I, I well, would. It's probably well, get a lot of butter in it, maybe. Which you don't so you that. scrape off the butter and but, well, <laughs> maybe. No, I'd scrape the butter off and eat it, and then put the, <laughs> the rest. Now of that's it. a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> you you probably you know it depends on how much you're putting in. Yeah. You know if it's only a small amount off a couple pieces of cake, and you've got a full container of stuff to go in with it. It's not going to matter. So an egg salad that's going bad. Well, um, it, I d dump. I'm a dump it in. I don't put think it in. A problem with that. But not tuna fish salad because that's fish, right? I I. Yeah, I, I that's kind of kind of. It's on the line. <laughs> I would, yeah, I would not put that in. The tuna. Yeah. Fish. And if I'm making. Um, like chicken or something. I don't eat much red meat only. I don't know why, I just don't. But, um, you know, if I if I get done and there's like a little piece of chicken like that and I don't feel like opening up my freezer and opening up the bag that my chicken yeah. is in, I'll, I'll check a, that a, a dollop is okay, huh? Yeah, <laughs> you gotta give yourself a break. Yeah. I mean, realistically, if, if it's something that is on that line, but you don't, it's not something that you use all the time, and you don't like throw away constantly. Yeah. If it's just a little bit of something, if it's something on the line, would that mean yeah. stuff that's on the line? You know, if but it's not like. That's, if it's something that's uh, otherwise compostable, the meats are compostable. It's just that you can't get the composter, the home composter, hot enough to really cook it. Uh, it's only good in a commercial composter. So if you have something that's otherwise compostable, you know, uh, uh, not if it's plastic, of course, but you, you can throw it in there, just a little bit of it. Yeah, it's I mean, it's not gonna hurt your compost. I imagine you're not throwing out like loads and loads of tuna salad. No, it's just, night. you know, a few right. spoons full. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and just remember that it's, the also thing about meat and fish is that it will attract Got a pretty potent smell and it'll able to smell attract different, creatures right? that you don't yeah. want. Yeah, right. good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Questions? Do you need to rinse the eggshells? I never do. No. Some people, I know somebody who runs them through a, a proce food processor or a blender mm -hmm. to crush them up. 
I wasn't talking about the cross. I was talking about the insides. The Yeah, no. Okay. Yeah. Um, so cooked or raw is okay? Cooked eggshells or raw? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one other thing I, I mentioned when you're building a compost, uh, one of the reasons compost breaks down is that there are lots of microbes uh, that go in there and eat and digest and change the nature of what's there. Uh, to start your compost off when you build that compost at the beginning, uh, a lot of people will recommend that you take a couple of handfuls of good dirt and throw it in there, you know, something off the forest floor, because it's going to be filled with those microbes, and that will start the process going. Mm -hmm. it's, you don't have to do a lot, just enough to get it going. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you have um, no access to horse manure, cow manure, chicken manure, is the bagged manure that you get at um, Home Depot okay? Yeah, yes, but it's uh, it's an expensive way to do your compost. Right. I don't put any manure in, in yeah. mine. Okay. It's not a requirement. What's that? You don't have to put add manure to your compost. Oh, okay. No. no. Okay. Yeah, it's just an ingredient that um, that is works. acceptable. Yeah. If you have it and you want to get rid of it, throw it in the compost, but. Otherwise, not necessary. The Thetford Elementary School, I'm just getting, uh, Thetford Elementary School has like the gold standard uh, school composting program, and they happen to have a stable nearby, <laughs> and the person offered to bring it to them. Mm -hmm. They also happen to have a woodworker in town who offered to bring food, sh you know, <laughs> shavings and, and all of that. Yeah. So, uh, and they've got a five bin system, and it's lined insulated with blue insulation board and they take the whole thing is run by the students the staff kitchen staff maintenance has nothing to do with it it's all run by the kids and they have a giant composter thermometer that they stick in the pile to measure the, th the heat and in the middle of january their compost uh one winter registered 160 degrees wow mm -hmm. Uh, and that's when you know you're doing it right. Uh, so I'm just looking at my notes here to be sure that I didn't forget something really, really. Um, doesn't matter whether you put your composter in the sun or in the shade, really. Mm -hmm. The heat is generated by the microbes doing the work. You don't want to put it so far away from your house that in the winter mm. you forget about it and say, I'm not doing it. Uh, although I do have a couple of friends who compost in the summer and their compost is out on the edge of their lawn. And in the winter, they take their food scraps to um, a, dro a local drop-off place. So that's another, another thing you can do. Um, because of Invasives, you don't want to put invasive plants in your compost because the seeds will, you'll pretty mm. soon have invasives Germinate. all over your, your yard. Mm. Uh, and it's a controversy, not a controversy, there's a lot of discussion about what is the proper thing to do with invasives. What do you think? Oh, I not agree to put you on the spot. But. Because most of the time seeds will not get so hot that when you spread it, they won't uh, germinate. So your chances of anything going in there that might germinate, you may see something growing from it. Tomatoes. <laughs> <They're great. laughs> I, I put this stuff on the garden a couple of years ago, and I had so many tomatoes growing. Oh, that's <laughs> uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, that stuff happens. So, yeah, invasives, steer clear. Mm. Best thing to do with invasives, I've been told, is to um, uh, put them on a. I put mine in my. I have a garage that I don't use in the summer, so I put them on the cement floor in the garage, and let them die. And then I have a friend who has a, a bonfire in the fall, and um, I put them in a big tarp and I take them down. Mm -hmm. I throw them on the bonfire, and that's the, what I. It's the best thing I, I do with it, but uh, did you have another question? Yeah, the question. Uh, 
when we first start the sample file, yeah. should we put this packet in there? Uh, leaf yeast ye packet. No. Uh, I've never heard of that. This will start, start the cooking process, huh? <laughs> Well, it's, you're not I mean, it's, you know, it's he used to cook vitamin C at oh, <laughs> Hoffman okay. La Roche. Yeah, okay. No, I've never heard of that. You could try it, probably wouldn't hurt, but. Uh, yeah, wouldn't yeah. hurt. Yeah. Um, and, and you don't want to place one of these inside. You know, certainly not on a cement or other uh, hard floor uh, because you need the drainage to come out. But if you. Do as I do, and you chop up a whole load of brown leaves in the fall. What I do is I get a whole bunch of uh, black plastic trash bags, the big ones, contractor size, and I fill them with the leaves, and I put that in my garage where it's dry. Mm -hmm. And then I can take them out as necessary during the winter and throw them in with the compost. Uh, I usually get enough to get me right through the winter and the spring. I hear that from a lot of people uh, who are frustrated with composting is that they don't, uh, in the middle of the winter, they, they don't know where to get any brown material. Yeah. And it's pretty easy to get it. You just have to think, you know, I have to plan ahead. And as Peter said, put it someplace where it's, where it's dry. Mm -hmm. You also don't want to put your composter, uh, any kind of composter, under the eaves of your house where mm -hmm. it's going to get a lot of rain mm -hmm. or, you know, the mm -hmm. snow will bury it. Did we cover everything? I think we did it. Wow. Okay. Any other uh, questions? And it's been an hour, so it's a time to quit. Um, I have these in the back of my truck outside. If anybody would like to purchase them, they come in the box like that. They're very easy to put together, um, and I and th those are sixty five dollars, and I think you will find them cheapest. Uh, Home Depot is like ninety nine or a hundred, uh, and they go up from there. And these are um, these are five dollars, and they are called. They're made from a company in Canada called Sure Clothes, and they uh, they snap clothes. And they have, they do not have a carbon filter in them, but they're, um, that's, that's, the, the air can get, you know, through and out, so they don't stink quite as bad when you open them. So anyway, if anybody's interested. So one of you doesn't have to buy. Oh, that's right. <laughs> so if you will do the honors. And Drum roll. So do the the yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a one in five chance, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Not bad. Maggie. Days. Days. Yay! It was worth the try. I was going to say, oh, do I need to do another one? We need to do the Okay, so that was for the bin. I was going to say, you have to serve one of these for free for driving an hour and a half. <laughs> Where did you drive from in New York? Um, we are in Hampton, which is, um, is east of, west of Pulteney. Gotcha. Okay. I think that's one. Oh, wow. I got two stuck together, but the top one is Thomas Thays. <laughs> <laughs> who rigged us? <laughs> don't, don't, don't even look at who was the well, other one because they're going to feel bad. No, the, oh, it's the second one was blank. Blank, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Uh, Thank you all. Can you go for just a couple of minutes? Go over the process of, of throwing things at the at the transfer station. Oh how, sure, sure. How how do you what can you what is it like? I don't know anything about it. Yeah, there's a sign to show you where it is. Okay. Um, he's talking about Cavendish. It's when you right. drive in. It's immediately on your right. On the left. On the right. On the right. Uh -huh. On the right. Uh -huh. And. Uh, but you don't want to do it as you circle it out. Yeah, you got to so, circle it so go clockwise. Walk up, there's a couple of steps. You step up on, okay. and then you just dump it. So if I have a container of vegetables, I put them in the vegetable, or container no, of... just one, just one container. One container for all of my, 
Uh, except um, your, except for allowable. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I'll have enough for um, one of these myself because I'm keto and I don't eat a lot of. There are a lot of things that I, I don't use. So. Absolutely. You know, this is not a hard sell. This is just if you are interested. No, no, no. Uh, I would. Is that I'm easy in, to break very down? Very interested, but I just don't know you that can. it would be yeah. useful for me yeah. personally. I heard a story. We have a little Honda Civic. Peter, okay, we'll take that part. Peter can tell me if this is. I I heard a story from Mary, my colleague, uh, about the Cavendish transfer station. You can tell me if it's true, and even if it's not true, I'm going to keep keep telling this story. <laughs> um, that they had a big hole where they were dumping food scraps at when we first started. Uh -huh. uh, no, not true. No, not true? true. <laughs> oh my God, all right, then I'm not going to tell you. It was the beginning <coughs> of the compost pit. Oh, it was a good beginning. Yeah, and a bear like, got in? No, we had a raccoon get in there. Well, what, all right, then I'm, I'm telling a complete story, but it makes a great... Let's not tell that story. <laughs> it makes a great story. And I don't use the town. <laughs> don't use the name of the town. But the happy ending is we have a great compost system. We do. System. Yeah. <laughs> Some people are like, we wish got in that hole. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you all for coming. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Spread. Production services by Okemo Valley TV.